What's up, Ego Hackers? Welcome to the CS Joseph Podcast. Today's question, what is the SI Demon even good for? <laughs> I love this question. So glad it was asked. Thank you to the acolytes out there who are asking really deep, really, uh, really creative questions. When I have the opportunity to film it, film these great questions, sometimes I go beyond my minimum of 10 minutes and get really, really deep because I just really care about the topic. And this is absolutely one of the topics I care about the most. So. Uh, to the acolyte out there who asked this question, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I am, I'm, so, I'm so excited for it. But understand that there is some companion content that goes along with this particular video. Well, I'm gonna be discussing uh, some of the intricacies and like what the real value is of having Introverted Sensing Demon and why it's so important and why it's necessary, especially in the context of relationships. That being said, we have some episodes in the journeyman area uh, relating to the hypocrisy of INTJs and INFJs, which this episode is about, because they have introverted sensing demon, but also uh, the demon function episode that we have there, which goes in really, really deep about introverted sensing demon. Make sure you guys watch that content in addition to this video so that you can get the complete picture. So I'm not gonna be going deep into what's already presented in the journeyman stuff. I'm gonna be basically treating this video like a little bit of an addendum uh, to those videos, uh, to uh, you know, from a, from a relationship perspective, to show you how valuable introverted sensing demon actually is, it is insanely valuable. The thing is, though, is what I've noticed about people who have introverted sensing demon. Right, they themselves do not know how valuable it actually is. They often see it like a like a burden, right? And don't get me wrong, it absolutely can be a burden to have introverted sensing demon, but it also has some insane value too. So let's talk about some of the burdens first. Like all of a sudden cutting yourself and you have no idea that you did cut yourself. Also introverted sensing demon makes you feel entirely disconnected to your own body. Basically you don't actually feel like you can, uh, you actually sometimes feel like you're just jumping out of your own skin on a regular basis and you, you lack a lot of physical self-awareness. You end up pushing yourself way too far. This ends up leading to like lack of sleep, which ends up leading to a host of health problems relating to lack of sleep. That's why introverted sensing demons out of all the 16 types usually have the lowest lifespan. But every introverted sensing demon person that you actually talk to, what's funny is that they're like, yeah, I'm okay with that, especially INFJs. They, 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 they get to... That, that self-destructive nihilism that they have, they point it internally, whereas the INTJ points their self-destructive nihilism externally. And it's just so fascinating to see. So fascinating every single time to see that. But yeah, oh, introverted sensing demon can be a huge burden. And also it's, it, it ends up, you know, there's always a little bit of demon in the hero and their introverted intuition hero are constantly like, trying to find the quick fix, the quick way of doing things, and it ends up becoming just like, oh yeah, hey, I'm gonna take shortcuts and do shortcuts on literally everything in my life. And that's the problem. That's really the problem. So the lesson of the demon, as I'm always talking about the lesson of the demon, is that in order for an introvert intuition hero to actually get what they want, they have to be willing to put in the actual efforts to get it. It's so funny how Introvert intuition heroes are all about trying to find the effortless way or the path of least effort or the path of least resistance in order to actually get what they want. But this is entirely false. The obstacle is the way, you know, which is a stoicism approach to things. And Ryan Holiday wrote a book extensively about this. I highly recommend that as a companion to this particular video, you guys actually buy Ryan Holiday's book, The Obstacle is the Way, especially INJs also ENPs as well because of their INJ shadow and literally learn about how stoicism or the obstacles of the way can actually improve you and get you on a better path to success in your life because that literally is the path to success, especially if you're NI hero. Please go check that book out. I think it might actually be listed at csjoseph.life forward slash reading. If you guys click those links and buy those books or 
get an Audible account through us, uh, you know, we kind of get a commission on that, so which is really nice. If you guys want to help support the channel, please uh, increase our Amazon commissions. It's it's really nice. So just uh, click those uh, links. That would be uh, that would be really great. So yeah, be that as it may. What value is there? What good is there in having introverted sensing demon? You know, I watched a video a long time ago of Andrew Tate actually talking about the value of introverted sensing because no one values their own introverted sensing more than an ENTP or an ENFP because we have introverted sensing inferior. I have SI inferior. I know what it's like. And literally, introverted sensing is about time, service, attention, effort, right? That's what introverted sensing really actually is. It's, it's, it's really just effort. You know, the word that's synonymous with introverted sensing is effort. That's why when you talk to ENFP or ENTPs, they're constantly talking about effort all the time. That's why, you know, uh, Deadpool, for example, uh, Ryan Reynolds' portrayal of Deadpool in the movie, so he goes on the first Deadpool film and is always saying, maximum effort, maximum effort. Maximum effort is introverted sensing inferior. When it goes aspirational, it's all about putting in the most effort. Effort is everything to introverted sensing inferior. And that's why, you know, our love language ends up becoming acts of service, also known as contribution. Thank you, Duggo and Uberzerker, for that. That's amazing to have that uh, understanding of love languages because it really screwed with me for so long to understand how, you know, how much I value effort. And I put in maximum effort into my relationships but I very rarely ever meet someone who puts in the same amount of effort I put in, if not very much, or even half as much as I do in relationships. That's why when I see, for example, Railgun really putting an effort into my relationship with her and putting an effort into me and really honoring my effort, it's like the greatest thing in the world. It really is the greatest thing in the world, especially since I know her introverted sensing is a nemesis function. She's worried, constantly worried, that she's not putting in effort. And then because she's an outcome type, she'll just throw up her hands and just be like, and give up very easily. Cause like I put in all this effort, but apparently I'm putting my effort in the wrong place. So, and I don't know where to be putting in my effort. So she constantly feels set up for failure, right? And then that's, and that causes her FI trickster to feel like she's like never good enough for me, right? But when I do see that she is putting in effort, I hella honor it. I give, um, I give her a lot of special treatment when she puts in more effort, you know, especially when she's trying to do maximum effort, right? It's a big deal. And I guess this makes sense why the highest sexual compatibility that I have in terms of sexual relationships is the INTJ and the INFJ because what these types end up learning is that how important it is that, you know, for example, if they're in a relationship with me, how they need to be putting in maximum effort. They can't just shortcut the relationship that they have with me. And I've been with, I've been with INJs, you know, throughout my life, and they seem to consistently fail in this area. They really think that just because we have a golden pair or a pedagogue relationship, highest sexual compatibility, these women just assume that they can take shortcuts with me, and then it's going to be easier. The reality of the situation is, is that's entirely false. All relationships regardless of level of compatibility, require an insanely high amount of effort. Especially when you're with someone as picky as I am. Because introverted sensing inferior, and as much as introverted intuition inferior, are the pickiest of all the types. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. I even think ENFPs are even pickier than me. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah. That's a really good cigar. Very good cigar. So, that being said, effort, effort, effort is everything. Well, in the context of introverted sensing, demon, however, their effort is insanely valuable. In fact, their effort, I have to say, is even more valuable than my introverted sensing inferior. I have to, I have to say, because their effort, their introverted sensing demon is treasure. It is absolute treasure. And it's so funny because like INTJ, for example, INTJ is all about uh, 
got to find the ashtray over here. There it is. So, so introverted sensing, like, they're wayfarers. Wayfarers understand everything about treasure. They're trying to gather up for themselves as much treasure as they can and then take that treasure and find out who they can share that treasure with, right? What they have to understand is that what is that treasure? What is the, what is the essence of that treasure? And that treasure really ends up becoming stored up effort, right? That's what introverted sensing demon is all about. It actually is storage of effort. Very small storage. They're not storing up much. They're not very st storing up much treasure, much effort within themselves. But what they do is of the absolute highest value. And if you remember what Andrew Tate said, you know, when it comes to like your relationships with women, don't just give your time and your attention to just any woman. Your time and attention is the most valuable thing you have as a man. And I entirely agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. Like, you know, women in my life, you know, if they if they disrespect me, if they're not making me number one priority, especially like from my perspective, because I'm, I'm a malevolent, envious ENTP. Why is that relevant? It's relevant because, because I'm malevolent, what's missing from me is fanaticism, which means I require my woman to be a total, absolute fan, like a, like a total fangirl, basically, of me as a person. Not a fangirl from the perspective of C.S. Joseph, but a fangirl of Chase, basically. That's why it was like so important or it's such a big deal, you know, when Railgun told me to my face, you know, like, look, I didn't marry C.S. Joseph. I married Chase. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's 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 great. That's super valuable. You, you know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Like, it's all about it's all about where you're placing your effort. But again, it's time and attention. Like, I'm going to give time and attention to a woman who basically is fanatical about me, right? Because I'm malevolent and I'm missing the fanaticism side of my own octogram, basically. But then it also counts, you know, from the deadly sin living virtue perspective, because from a deadly sin point of view, my, um, my octogram, um, my deadly sin uh, is envy. So I'm extremely envious, which means what's missing is compassion. So I, I prefer women in my life who are very compassionate to me. That's one of the things that Railgun actually struggles with herself because no one's really been compassionate to her. And because of that, she doesn't have anyone to really mirror that high level of compassion. So like here I am, this outlier in her life, basically being compassionate to her because it is still my living virtue, right? And I could still be compassionate to Railgun, but because nobody else is compassionate to her, she doesn't really have a lot of data for her experted sensing hero to read, basically, and uh, to, to work with. And I'm the only source, so I'm just an outlier. She has ISTJ shadow, which means she needs to have a consistent amount of data in front of her that her experted sensing hero is able to consume. So in this case, she needs to have people being compassionate, more than one, at least, like a pattern of compassion. So at least three people being compassionate to her on a regular basis so that she herself can be a compassionate person, right? So again, you know, women in my life, in terms of time and attention, I expect them to be compassionate towards me and I expect them to be fangirls of me. I, I have that expectation because you know, of my octogram, right? Well, it's no different with INJs. INJs have the same issue. And it really comes down to time and attention. Their investment in terms of time and attention in terms of their relationships is absolutely everything. And because it's coming from an infrared sensing demon, okay, that means their time and their attention coming from an INJ is more valuable than literally anyone else's. So I had, a, um, I had an INJ in my life who you know, was, was, was dating and, and, and getting into dating and understanding dating uh, and how that worked. And I had to explain to this person, like, look, your introverted sensing, your time and attention that you give to a member of the opposite sex, you need to treat it like it's the most valuable treasure that you actually have. You know, going in, in, in line with what Andrew Tate said, but I was explaining to this INJ, it's like, look, you have an introverted sensing demon. Your time and attention is the most valuable because you might spend your entire life trying to figure out who to actually put your time and attention towards, right? Because think about it, like INTJs, 
you know, like the Heart Temple. Heart Temple has this problem where like, Heart Temple is the biggest liars of all the types. Let's be honest. They are the biggest liars. Absolutely. Especially the ENTPs and the INTJs. We like wearing masks. The ENTP can create masks at any moment, right? And wear a mask and then they, they, they craft identities. Whereas the INTJ ends up crafting one identity for themselves, one mask that they wear 100% of the time. And they're only going to take that, uh, that mask off for literally just one person. Literally one person is what they're going to do. One person. This is why INTJs or INJs in general don't allow themselves to get close to people with, uh, in terms of relationships until they know for a fact that this person is, is exactly who they want. And then they'll give up their time and attention because they know their time and attention is so valuable that the second that they give it to someone, they are attached to that person. They are attached to them and they will ne never let go of that person for the rest of their life. This is one of the reasons why, especially INJ women, need to go out of the way to have as small a body count as possible because they are the, at the highest risk of comparing their past sexual relationships with whichever current sexual relationship they are in. And that makes them the most likely to you know, initiate divorce in terms of development phase or initiate breaking up in, when they hit development phase in their late 30s with men. Don't forget, 83% of all divorce out there is actually initiated by women. So INJ women play a huge, huge role in this. What I have noticed, though, is that INTJ women typically have a lot smaller body counts. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're in extremes. They either have the most body count up there with INFJs, which typically INFJ women have insanely high body counts because they are soul temple, looking for intimacy and connectedness, and they utilize their sexuality as like this gateway or this way to feel connected to other people. That's why they have really high body counts. But for an INTJ, it's more of extremes. They either, they've either like, they're like Madonna, who is an INTJ, who has had sexual relations with thousands of men. And she even wrote a book when she broke, when her body count got above a thousand basically. Or you have the INTJ woman whose body count is like basically zero or one or two. It's like extremely small, right? And this ends up becoming, you know, a big deal. But it all centers around their introverted sensing demon. Which man did they choose? Which person did they choose to share the most deepest, darkest part of themselves, which is where they have their buried treasure, which is ultimately their introverted sensing demon. So what INJs need to learn is that when it comes to, they can't just give their time and attention to just anyway. They have to learn how to leverage it, especially in relationships. It's like, hey, if I'm bothering to give you my time and attention within the context of a relationship, if I'm bothering to go that far for you, that means I'm already all in. Therefore, it is perfectly fine for me to expect a same level of investment. A same, because, because, you know, from the INJ perspective, they're either all in, they're going to put in all of the effort in, where it almost is like, you know, the introverted sensing demon is almost acting like a hero to a point, because there's always a little bit of the demon in the hero. Their NI hero has that introverted sensing uh, demon aspect to it because this is the battleground of titans basically from a cognitive reflection standpoint. If you want to learn more about cognitive reflection, you want to watch the season 18 episodes on it uh, in cognitive mechanics inside the journeyman area, csjoseph.life forward slash members to become a journeyman member. And the login is at csjoseph.life forward slash portal. And if you want to see a mem menu of like basically all the products that we have available, just go to the portal and you'll see them there listed. So from that perspective, it's really, it's really a big deal, you know, to just understand that like from an introverted sensing demon perspective, like your time and attention is the most valuable thing about you. Leverage it. Only give your time and attention to people that you actually want, that you actually desire. But the thing is, is that your expert sensing inferior can see that they are putting in that same high amount of investment, that same high amount of effort, that same high amount of loyalty to you. I've heard INJs throughout my life tell me that they are loyal to a fault. It's really not necessarily that they're loyal to a fault. It's more like they are attached to a fault. This is why I recommend to every INJ out there, especially women, especially women, and I say read the book Attached. And I do technically have to thank my INTJ ex, uh, Andy, for turning me on to that book because a lot of my introverted sensing demon work actually came as a result of interacting her, with her and, and reading that book and, and following those recommendations. Yeah, sure, while our relationship was an absolute total shit show, 
at the end of the day, I learned some extremely valuable lessons. And, you know, as a result of that pain, I ended up becoming stronger and more effective at this science. And so I, I, I have to, I have no choice but to actually thank her for that because it just made me better. You know what I'm saying? So from that perspective, you have to understand that, like, you have to learn how to leverage. You have to leverage your, your introverted sensing. But how do you leverage it? Well, here's some example. You know, when you're sharing your treasure, your time and attention, which is treasure, when you're sharing that treasure towards a member of the opposite sex, it's not a bad thing for you to expect them to pay you tribute, basically. Pay you tribute, right? Because you already are paying tribute to them with time and attention. And if they're not giving you time and attention, what the hell? Like, seriously, what the hell? What are you doing? Like, no. Like, that is so disrespectful. That is so meaningless. That is such a slap in the face to an INJ. The problem is, is that like now we live in this, you know, pickup culture. Um, we live in this, you know, casual sex culture, this Babylonian bullshit culture of the United States of America within Western society that we live in. And because of that, you know, women are encouraged to engage in open hypergamy on a regular basis. And they, they end up not realizing the value of uh, their own time attention with their introverted sensing demon. Or if they are an SI inferior woman, for example, they're not really understanding the value of the INJ men and their introverted sensing. Because I've noticed so many times the INJ men in my life and like the, women, and the NP women that they get with or any woman that they get with, these women don't really place that high a value on the time and attention of introverted sensing demon because they're so used to getting attention from men all over the place, constantly. A woman will never have to deal with loneliness. I don't care if you're an INFJ woman or an ESTP woman and you are technically the loneliest out of all the types just by being, by virtue of being an ESTP or an INFJ woman, but still, you will never be as lonely as any of the other men out there specifically because of just how our culture works, right? Because of this cultural environment that we have when it comes to putting women on this pedestal that we have consistently. Where our entire culture, men are expected, if not actually do behave like Adam did in the Garden of Eden, basically, and is putting women consistently on a pedestal. So what men have to learn, especially INJ men, they have to learn to leverage their time and attention. Well, again, one of this thing, one of the, one of this way is it ends up becoming something we call the test of the demon the test of introverted sensing demon. I don't really talk about test of demon. I've been talking mostly about the test of the parent and the test of the critic in the context of um, bronze pair relationships, also known as the natural pair. And that is covered extensively in, uh, we have a lecture series, season 14, part three, in the journeyman uh, member section. If you wanna learn more about natural pairs, check that out. Um, but the test of the demon basically is you have to see yourself as an INJ when you're in a relationship with somebody. And it, doesn't have, and it could also extend beyond relationships. It also could extend to your career. It could extend to your family. It could extend to your friends. But the bottom line is, it's just like, look, are, you, are people honoring your effort? Are they honoring your time and attention by giving you time and attention back? Are they giving your expert sensing inferior that time and attention? Because you know that you are going to be attached to a person or attached to a job, attached to a family, attached to friends. You're allowing yourself to get attached. If these people are not honoring your time and attention, you need to do one thing and that is the door slam. You have to door slam. And this is ultimately why INJs door slam people because they put in that high level of effort and that time and attention. Because their demon function basically is the inferior function of their shadow, basically. And as one thing, you know, like the demon sometimes needs to be treated as if it is an inferior function because it has its own insecurities. And that's why the, through cognitive orbit, the extra sensing inferior of an INJ is actually so sensitive to failure, abandonment, uh, people not sticking around, people giving their time and attention to other things because they have focused all of their attention from their introverted sensing through the focus of their introverted intuition hero, the battleground of the titans, basically. These two titans, introverted sensing demon and the introverted intuition hero, they are focusing all their time and attention through their introverted intuition hero towards one person or one friend or one family or one job, and they are laser focused. And for someone to not give a similar focus back to them, or at least be willing to share with them when they share, it's a huge slap in the face. It is extremely offensive. It's egregious, actually. Albeit, it's 
abusive. It is actually abusive, okay? So why would you put your INJ in that position? You know, I, I, have to, I have to admit, there were a few times in my life where I did treat INJs that way. I had, a, a, and it was, it, was a, it was actually a lot of the INFJ men in my life. I've had a very hard time keeping INFJ men in my life um, because they're, cons they're consistently questioning my loyalty towards them because they see me spend my time and attention on the stupidest of things. And they're extroverted feeling parent, and they're extroverted thinking, um, and then for the INTJs as well, they're extroverted thinking parent comes out and starts parenting me and informing me like, hey, why aren't you giving me the time and attention that I need? It's not necessarily deserve. Of course, you know, an INFJ would have that point of view. Or maybe the ISFJ superego of the INTJ would have that point of view. Because from their perspective, it's like, I don't share myself with just anyone. Why are you sharing yourself with literally everyone? Is there nothing sacred to you, SI inferior? You know, is there nothing sacred? And that's the thing I always got to remember. SI users around INJs, you need to treat your time and attention that you give them as something that is sacred and something that is set apart, something that is sanctified specifically for those people. And there are a lot of people out there who just don't understand that. And it ends up getting worse and worse and worse. And it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. And again, this is, this is literally not honoring the time and attention or the treasure of the INJ. It, it is abuse. It's abuse. It's abuse. You know, just like, you know, someone not honoring my, my performance, you know, as I'm putting in a lot of effort towards someone and I have to make sure that I'm performing well with my expert sensing demon, that is how you would abuse me, the ENTP, right? So abuse ends up becoming the serious problem and it literally comes down to whether or not someone can pass the test of the demon. It's like, you know, so what INJs end up having to do, especially in terms of a relationship, what they end up having to do is that they have to learn how to squelch and be really careful who they give their time and attention to. And then there's not a bad thing. Like, you know, before they get to the point of door slamming someone, what I would recommend, you know, to perform the test of the, of the demon. Perform the test of the demon before just going straight to door slam. Because if you perform the test of the demon, you know as an INJ if it's okay to door slam. You know as an INFJ if it's ethical to door slam. Or you know as an INTJ that, yeah, I'm doing a good thing here. I am doing what is rational for myself. I need to do the test of demon. It will give them the evidence that they need to make the decision to door slam. Sometimes I see INJs door slam too quickly, especially because they've been hurt. And that introverted sensing demon ends up becoming abusive itself because it will start punishing other people in their life for, for things that other people have done to them. So it's like, hey, these past men or these past women in my life have hurt me and you are behaving in a similar way. So that must mean you're gonna do the same thing that they're doing uh, that they did to me, so I'm just going to treat you the same way as if you're abusing me when that's not actually what's going on. INJs really, really struggle with not finding innocent people guilty based on past abuse that they've suffered. All the more reason to read the book Attached and the book Codependent No More. I highly recommend that. So that ends up becoming a problem. They just want someone to treat them as if they are sacred, to treat their time and attention as sacred. And so you, as an SI user, need to make sure that you are setting pieces of yourself that you share with them, specific with them. And this is especially important. If you're a man and you have a polygynous lifestyle where you have multiple women and you're having multiple relationships with multiple women, right? And they're not allowed to have relationships with any other man, but just you. When you're an introverted sensor and you're in that position, what you have to end up doing is you have to carve out specific pieces of yourself that you only do and you only share with just them and not with any other woman in your life. That's important. And because of male idealism, we as men actually have the mental capacity of doing that. Women do not, do not have that ability. So this is why women aren't polygynous and they're hypergamous and men are polygynous naturally within their sexual strategy. So, but again, the bottom line is test of the demon, which means you need to see if these people in your life that you have relationships, friends, family, even job situations, uh, or um, uh, you know, lovers, uh, sexual relationships, you test these people by seeing if they are willing to pay you tribute. 
And if they do pay you tribute, which is basically proof to you that they are honoring your time and intention investment in them, if they're willing to pay tribute, well, guess what? That means those people should still be in your life and you should endorse them. If they're not paying you tribute, well, guess what? They're taking advantage of you. They don't actually care about you. They're just using you. You need to door slam immediately and get away from those people as soon as possible. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.